Hey, 4C Divers, welcome to Facebook Live. Thank you for tuning in. Go ahead and tell us where you're listening in from and give us a little hello in the comment section. My name is Nicole. I'm your social media director here at 4C, and we have... And I'm Greg, and I look at Windy Gaps. <laughs> well, Greg is also with 4C. He's uh, here in our Boca Raton store on Sundays. Correct. And he also is a 4C instructor. He teaches both recreational and technical diving. And um, his specialty is rescue diver, right? Uh, these days, yeah, it is rescue diver. We've been yeah. doing a lot of rescue classes recently. So if you're looking to earn that certification, I believe you have a class coming up soon. We do. It starts next weekend. Mm, all right. So if you want more info, get a hold of Greg. All right, guys. Like I said, say hello to us in the comments section. Let us know where you're listening in from. Uh, we have a great presentation tonight. So I'm. this is a topic we've never done before. And I recruited one of the best people to help me uh, get that information out to you guys. And before we get uh, started, uh, if you want to give us a thumbs up, a smiley face, <laughs> or a heart emoji, yeah. <laughs> uh, we would love to see you guys entertaining us. And also, if you have questions, you can write them in the comment section and let us, uh, we'll answer those as we go along. And the other thing, too, is this weekend, we have a super deal for the Super Bowl. So you oh, guys wow. are hearing about this because I haven't started promoting it yet. We have a deal on fill cards this weekend. It's going to be 25 fill cards for 10% off. So if you are thinking about uh, racking up some fills on your card, either air or nitrox, come on in. We're going to have that deal starting, I believe, this Friday. And it goes through Sunday. All right. So... Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. All right. We just wanted to make sure everyone's all tuned in so that we don't start without you. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start. So. All right. So obviously, you guys are tuning in to the Marine Forecast Facebook Live with your force instructors, me, Nicole, and Greg. All right. So. Weather in Florida, Greg. Weather in Florida. I think this uh, photo speaks volumes. Um, if you've been here your whole life or you're uh, someone who has been here a few years, you all should know that there's a saying here in Florida, if you don't like the weather, wait 20 minutes. That is definitely the truth. Yep. So the biggest thing is before you walk out your door, you want to make sure to check your weather before you uh, go diving. And we like to use websites and apps. Um, some of the ones that are listed here, uh, Windy is actually the top favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, some people use WindFinder, um, but it's not always as accurate. But we're going to go over um, what that looks like so that you can kind of uh, see what that's all about. And the NOAA Marine Forecast website. And there's also the 4C website or social media. So if you are um, following us on our Facebook or our Instagram page, I tend to get on there and do the live dive reports from the boat or from the shore. And we give you guys stories and we try and keep it up to date. Go ahead. So why is it important to read the marine forecast? Uh, people always ask me, like, you know, what's it like to dive in the wintertime in Florida? And I always tell them it's like the absolute best time of year because we get incredible visibility. But you have to be really particular about picking your spots because... It's winter time and it gets windy, but that doesn't mean that there aren't excellent dive days to be had. Um, I think right around uh, the beginning of the year, for example, I happened to catch a cold, so I couldn't go diving. But everybody was posting reports of like 100 and plus foot of visibility in calm seas. And here it is the beginning of January. And, you know, now we're into February and the same thing can be true. A little windy today, but that doesn't mean it's going to be windy tomorrow or this weekend for that matter. So as divers, we have to be really aware of what the weather conditions are going to be. Whether you're doing a beach dive, whether you're going out on a boat, it doesn't matter. We wanna make sure that above all else, we're diving safety. So not only knowing what the weather is going to be like on any given dive day being important, but it's also important to know how to interpret what you're getting from the various sources of information, because generally speaking, the apps and the reports that we get, they only paint a small picture of an overall larger kind of trend for what 
the dive conditions are going to be. Uh, you also have to be aware of, you know, what everybody's personal level of comfort and, and safety is. Uh, we talked a little bit about, you know, I've been doing a lot of rescue courses recently. And one of the things that we stress is, you know, knowing your own limits. And, and one of the biggest causes of stress can be environmental conditions. So it's incredibly important that you be aware of what your own limitations are and those of your buddies and, and your dive pals. Uh, you know, especially if you're on a boat where you can get seasick, uh, it can also be super challenging to get back up onto the boat. You know, surprisingly, it's really easy to fall off the side of the boat, no matter what the conditions are. The problem is always getting back up onto the boat. Um, and I've, uh, I'm from New Jersey originally. So, you know, our, our, any given day was three to five foot seas and you kind of had to be prepared for that. So I've been in some pretty gnarly conditions. Um, but getting back up onto the boat is always the most challenging part of, of the entire process. Okay, so let's go ahead and break down the science of the waves and wind. So wave heights, um, the definition of a wave height is the vertical distance between the crest, which is called the peak, and the trough of a wave. So the smaller and further apart the waves are, the smoother the ride will be. The bigger and closer together they are, the worse the ride's going to be. So an example would be if it's a four foot wave, it's going to be an eight foot drop. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> right. <laughs> and I think it's important, you know, when you look at this um, and, and kind of how it translates into into dive conditions is that not all waves are necessarily created equal. And we'll talk more about that when we analyze some of the tools that we use to look at how the weather is going to is going to be. Um, I talked about New Jersey before, like the waves down here and, and the, the, the quote unquote chop that we get down here is completely unlike what we used to see in New Jersey. Up in New Jersey, it was always big rollers. Uh, they happen to get very big, but we don't get that super duper often down here, but we do get wind chop. So you kind of have to look at your wave and say, all right, how is this particular situation going to apply to whether you're doing a beach dive or if you're going to be on a boat? And just a little bit of science there when he's talking about the rollers versus the smaller waves. Um, the reason why uh, we get the waves that we have here is because we have the coral reefs offshore. And so the wave velocities will hit that and it'll speed the wave down. Cool. All right, so let's talk about your wave period. Uh, this is measured in seconds and it's the gap between one wave and the next. So if you look at the picture, that's the gap there. So the wave period is a crucial factor in determining the speed, size, and power of the ocean wave, which can have a significant impact on the surf conditions. Yeah, so, you know, it's like we said, not all waves are created equal. Um, and there's been days when, you know, especially once we get into hurricane season, there may be a storm a thousand miles off the coast of Florida, and you'll see big old rollers coming through. And, well, it's, it's very doable topside, you get underwater and you get caught in that volume of water moving about and it makes for a less enjoyable time down below. Where if you flip it the other way, we've had days also where it's incredibly choppy topside, but you get underwater and it's absolutely pristine conditions. So that's why, I, you know, I go back to everything paints a small piece of the picture. And it's not until we put all of those different pieces together that you get the full kind of analysis of what the weather is going to do. Okay. So let's also pay attention to wind. So the wind direction is the direction from which the wind originates. And you can use things like flags or trees or the apps to figure that out. And then the wind speed is the rate at which the air is moving horizontally past a given point. And again, you can use apps to figure this out. So when we're looking at this photo that you're seeing here, you're seeing your wind direction on the far. Well, is that the left or right on them? Mm. On us, it's left. I right. don't know on you guys. Or is it right? I don't know. Mm. Anywho. So it says wind direction, the way it's flowing. So um, you see these blue arrows. You want to pay attention to the column that says oceanographic uh, convention right there. Those are the um, directions. So as you can see, uh, the best type of wind is going to be west, so from west to east. And so the arrow goes which direction? This way, across the state of Florida. And we're going to talk about that next. So why does it matter which way the wind blows from? Um, first of all, you know, when I one of my favorite indicator of winds is the palm trees. Because uh, it's, it's real easy to go outside and just look at the trees and see what's happening. If they're not moving, that's generally a good sign. Flags are another reason. But 
you have to also look at which direction the flag or the palm trees are blowing. Uh, wind fetch can be described as the length of water over which a given wind has blown without obstruction. So if I'm standing on the beach in Deerfield and the wind is blowing from the west, the wind is traveling across the peninsula of Florida. And when it hits the ocean, it's going to be right where I'm standing. That's the first time they're going to meet. So what that generally does when we say, oh, yeah, it's going to be west winds, it's going to be dead flat calm, is there's not a lot of time for the wind to interact with the surface of the water to build up that wave action. So west winds are great. Now, if we flip it the other way and we have winds blowing from the east, uh, you can kind of see a little bit of the Bahamas on the on the far uh part of the map there. But generally speaking, the first thing that an easterly wind is going to hit is the Bahamas. And then once it gets past the Bahamas, it's nothing but open ocean until it hits the Florida Peninsula. So when it's due east winds, things tend to get much rougher because you've got a longer fetch. Now, when you're looking at variations on that, whether they be north winds or south winds or northeast winds, whatever, you kind of have to look at the position from where the winds are originating and where they're blowing. So, for example, um, if you look at Jupiter Inlet, you can kind of see right under Jupiter Inlet, the peninsula of Florida kind of bumps out a little bit. So if you're in Deerfield and the winds are kind of blowing from like the north, northeast, depending on how much out of the east they are, we actually get a little bit of protection down here from the bump out on the peninsula. So it may be a very diveable day. Whereas if you flip it to the other side and you're looking at the south, there's there's nothing but open ocean there. So generally, if we've got south winds, no matter which direction they're coming, if there's any bit of easterly flow, then we tend to get choppier conditions. And so there's one thing I want to point out is that sometimes um, when I'm giving my dive reports on the Facebook or on the Instagram, and a lot of you guys will go, Nicole, that is not what it's like. Well, it just depends on where you're at, just like he said. So if I'm diving in, say, Pompano Beach versus, say, up in Palm Beach, it's going to be different. And so that's why when you uh, are going to pick your dive site, you need to be aware of what he just said. So let's look at some examples. Oh, I love examples. All right. So this is why I recruited Greg to do this is because he taught me this a few months ago because I was really struggling. Um, what I learned is that you should look at multiple apps. Okay. So the ones that we're using, um, WindFinder and Windy. So Windy is the best one. Yes. Okay? In my opinion. The most my, accurate. I, I think so. Okay. And I believe that both of them have the free feature. Mm -hmm. If you want the upgrade, you can pay for it. Um, but you just go to your app store on your phone and it's available in both Android and Apple mm -hmm. um, and Google. And basically uh, you download it and uh, you can plug in to your favorites area. So like for me, I dive a lot in Pompano Beach, uh, Jupiter, Palm Beach, um, Boynton. So I have those cell saved. Um, now the one on, I guess you would call this, is this the right or the left one? We're looking at this. Okay. The one with the red on it. Okay. That is a uh, wind finder. And then Windy is the one with the uh, map of Florida. Okay. So every time that we're talking, we're going to try and show you the difference between the two apps. Right. So if you look at Windy, the map, you can kind of see that there are little streaks of white that are uh, extending from the northeastern part of where we would be in Florida, kind of around Jacksonville. And then they extend down towards where we are in South Florida. Now, when you go on the app and you actually look at this, and we'll show you a live version of this, it's going to be animated. So there's going to be no ambiguity about which way the little lines are going. All right. So you can kind of see in this example that we have a wind that is originating from the northeast. And because of how easterly that flow is, you can kind of look at almost as parallel with the slant right underneath where I was talking about that bump out in the Florida Peninsula. So on this particular day, it's a pretty safe bet that at, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon or 1400 hours, uh, it's going to be pretty choppy out there. Now, if we look at wind finder, that's the one with the, the red top there, you're going to see uh, an estimation of what the the wave height is. Uh, so in this case at right around, around one, two o'clock on this day, it was like between nine and 11 feet. And then you had a period of about 12 seconds. So they were calling for 11 to 12 foot waves every 12 seconds. So that, those are some pretty uh, gnarly conditions. I'd give that three chili peppers. 
and uh, <laughs> probably would, you know, rather be at home doing something else rather than diving or going to the bridge. Actually, if you look at the date, this is today. Oh, this was today. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, oh, yeah. So the boats did not go out no, today. They didn't. Sorry. <laughs> um, but just because you see this doesn't mean you can't dive. Um, I do a lot of shore diving um, in my classes and also for fun. Most people think I'm crazy for doing that, but I think there's just something magical about putting all the gear on and just walking into the sea. But just because it's doing this off the beach doesn't mean that we can't dive this day. The Blue Heron Bridge is protected, right? There's a, a natural uh, bay there that is protected from the, the broader ocean. So on a day like today, it doesn't matter how windy it is. Now, will it be a little chilly? Yeah, but that's what we've got boat coats and dry suits and all that good stuff for. And it could very well be a nice day at the, at the Blue Heron Bridge, which we've had a lot of this this uh, this year where it's been gnarly offshore. And, you know, there's been like 20, 30 feet of visit the bridge. Um, past couple of weeks, I've been going up to the bridge and just having tremendous dives. It's just been stunning. Yes, it's been amazing. Now, tell them a little bit about the way that these arrows look. Yeah, so if you look at the arrows, it kind of mimics what... Uh, you're seeing on the map as well. The reason that I don't like Windfinder for this is because it only points in one direction and there's no context for that arrow. Uh, particularly if you're not like a geography whiz and know that Pompano Beach is located where Pompano Beach is. It's much better to have some spatial reference for where the winds are blowing. So I like to use the map feature better for that. Perfect. There's also a color difference on the map. Uh, can you explain? The colors? Yeah. So generally speaking, uh, all weather maps are going to use some type of color scale uh, to indicate something. So whether it be how much rain is going to fall or how much snow is going to fall, or in our case, how much wind there's going to be. Uh, for windy uh, and wind finder, and generally speaking, uh, blues and greens are kind of the lower side of it. And then as you start to get into the yellows and the reds, it becomes the higher end of the scale. So for windy, if you see blue or light blue, that pretty much is, it's it's almost dead flat calm. You start to get into the greens a little bit and it starts to pick up. And then you start to get into the yellows and the reds and it, it's blowing quite hard at that point. And then once you get into the purples and then the blue on the other side, generally you only see those in like hurricane uh, or gale force winds. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at a good day. Yeah, so this is a perfect day. This is like get on your bicycle and ride to the sea and, and go do a beach dive. Now, what I want to point out here, though, is if you look at Windfinder and you look at the estimated wave heights, you're seeing somewhere between like a four to five foot wave height on a 10 second period. Now, if you look at that and you think, oh, my gosh, five foot waves, a 10 foot drop, that's going to be an unenjoyable day off the beach. It's definitely not going to be like that because again, it's all a snapshot. And a lot of this data comes from weather buoys and wave height buoys that are, are not located where we dive. We're really fortunate in southeastern Florida where the vast majority of our dive sites are within a mile of the beach. And with the exception of maybe uh, magic seaweed, which actually is designed to give surf forecasts, broader wave height forecasts aren't going to be super applicable to the to the type of dives and, and the places we're going. So in this case, I would ignore that completely and just go right to Windy, look at the map and see what the winds are doing. On this day, you're seeing pretty much light blue and a little bit of a darker blue everywhere. And they're very disorganized, meaning if we had the animated version of this, you're gonna see the, the little lines are gonna be moving in every which direction. On days like that, you gotta get your gear and go diving because it's gonna be like potentially Wagyu conditions, I don't want to oversell it, but if you've got good vis and wave height like this, definitely the makings of Wagyu conditions. And, you know, you're going to have some ripe huckleberries out there that you're going to want to get in the water and go have a beautiful dive. Now, if you were to just look at Windfinder and say, oh, it's gonna, then you'd be like, no, maybe I'm not going out today. But this particular day uh, was gorgeous. And if you look, if you're looking at Windfinder, my telltale sign is, is right here. Look at that wind speed, the knots. If it's very, very, very minimal wind speed, right. that kind of tells you that something's happening. And then there's that arrow. That's the arrow going which direction? West is best. Yeah, west is best. <laughs> uh, yeah, generally anything, other, I mean, five knots and under is definitely like, that is almost next to nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, you start getting closer to 10, okay, you know, it's still very doable. 
getting into 15 and 20, that's where you kind of start to evaluate, you know, wind direction and, and things like that. And then once you're above 20, that's usually where you want to kind of say, all right, it's probably going to be a little rough. All right. Let's take a look at another example. So when was this? This looked like uh, Sunday, February 4th. Yeah. The, this one, the, this nice one was Friday the 2nd. Okay. And then through the weekend and now we're at the 4th. Gotcha. So in this particular case, you could see we've got winds coming from the south on the windy map and you see that little blob of like yellowish red. So on this particular day, probably going to be a little rough. Oh, I was out in it. Oh, this is this past Sunday, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're crazy. Yeah, yeah. no, it was no, bad. <laughs> we should not have gone out. It was like five to six foot seas. Um, everybody did tried to do the first dive. Some succeeded, some didn't. And then we were like, we're done. We came back in. Yeah, no. uh, all the other dive boats were like, yeah, we. I think they kind of learned from our mistake. Yeah, bridge day. Oh, no. And then we ran to go do the bridge because it was a two o'clock uh, high gorgeous. tide. And nobody was there because it was um, so windy and it was rainy. But then the minute when it was time to splash, the 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 wind went away, the rain went away, and we were able to dive. And we had a good thirty foot of visibility. Ugh, and stunning, beautiful spotted eagle rays flying around us. It was Been a gorgeous. lot of spotted eagle ray action up at the bridge. Yep, they've been going crazy. All right, so obviously the winds no good on this day. Take a look over on the wind finder over here. There's those uh, really high wind speeds. The arrows are going the wrong way. Okay, so this is not a day to go diving. Stay home. Don't toss those cookies out there. You know, it's a good day on days like this. What I absolutely love, it's a really great day when it's kind of windy and you can't get in the water, is to visit your favorite local dive shop and maybe <laughs> think about upgrading some of your gear, you know? Absolutely. Um, all right. So this is actually back on January 31st. I just took a couple of screenshots. So we had examples. Uh, so what is it doing here, Greg? Oh, this is a great example. So if you look at the windy map, right, you have winds that are traveling mostly originating from the west, um, but they're, you know, upwards of probably 10 to 15 knots. Now, one of the other features you can do, and we'll show you this when we get to the live version of Windy, you can click anywhere on the map and it'll give you an actual wind speed forecast. Um, so you can actually get the wind speed from the map as well. But you're dealing with west winds. Nothing to worry about. It doesn't matter. You know, at some point it will matter. But when you've got winds 10, 15 knots that are blowing across the state of Florida, they're not going to really bother us where we dive. Now, would I go to the Bahamas on a day like today? No, because once you do get offshore and the winds have had an opportunity to, as we talked about before, fetch, then it will build the wave heights. And once you get out into the Gulf Stream, it could be really, you know, really rough. But that's not where we're diving, so we don't have to worry about it. All right. So... Let's look at some live examples. Cool. All right. So I'm going to have to switch over. Okay. Hold on, guys. This is what happens when you're live and you're also the person trying to make sure everything's working. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Ah, show and stream. There it is. Okay. Cool. So this is a live map of Windy. Uh, this is from their website, and it shows you what's really fun, too, is if you're a weather nerd like I am, you can look around the entire world. Uh, some of the, 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 they call them cyclones, but some of the hurricanes over in the Pacific, uh, you go and look at those. They, they're talking about adding a Category 6 because of how strong those storms are. But uh, for us here, we're focused on Florida. And if you look at the overall map, you could see like right in the mid-Atlantic, there's a lot of red and a lot of... Uh, deep orange and yellows. Yeah, it's usually pretty windy there. And as you, the more you, time you spend with windy and the more time you look at these trends, you can kind of see how the different uh, air masses move across the Atlantic and across the United States. You get a sense of where the jet stream is and all that kind of uh, fun stuff. But if you want to look at where we are in Florida, uh, you can zoom in and you can look and see exactly what's going on. Can you zoom in? Yeah, you should be able to. You might have to pinch. Oh, pinch. Like, you know, do the pinchy uh, thing uh -huh. or double click maybe. Maybe. There you oh, go. Oh, there we go. 
Cool. So you can see like that little pin that got dropped there says 23 knots on the east side of the Bahamas. Oh, 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 oh. And then if you click like, well, there you go, 12 knots as you get closer to, you know, it's probably like Pompano. So, you know, what would a day, what would it be like out there? Yeah. So we know that we were dealing with winds all day long. So if you looked at any of the surf cams today, or if you were down at the beach, there were some pretty gnarly waves. But as things start to move into the next day and as, and as things start to, uh, you know, transition overnight, it may very well be a case of the ocean starts to lay down. So you have to kind of look at uh, what I call the shoulders. Like if you're going to dive tomorrow, you know, start looking at, or, you know, if you're going to dive, what's today, Wednesday, if you're going to dive Friday, look and see what it's doing tonight into tomorrow and then Thursday into Friday. So right now it looks like, you know, you've got mostly north. This is tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So the wind is moving from like north, northeast to east. So it's probably going to be very similar to what it was like today. You can see over the peninsula, it's like a light blue. Now here's the thing that can happen when you start to look at these. See where the line is between the green and the blue? Depending on where that line is could make the difference between a doable dive day and a not so doable dive day. So if that line is three miles offshore and you've got like this disorganized windless air mass over our dive sites, well, it'll probably be pretty calm. But if that line is way far inland and you've got more easterly wind blowing across the, the surface of the water, it's going to be rougher. Tomorrow, I would say, is probably going to be doable if they can get out of the inlet because we're dealing with some uh, some offshore swell as well. This is Friday. Friday looks very doable. You've got mostly bluish color, even though it's coming from the east. Uh, it's very light winds. So, you know, is it going to be glass? No, but definitely doables. So you can absolutely, you know, plan on getting out on a day like today uh, if it holds to that. And what I find with Windy is like, Generally, within a week, it gets to be pretty precise. Now, if there's some like big weather event going on, then it, it isn't as good. But if it's if there's nothing out of the ordinary going on and it's just regular weather, it should be fine. The other thing you want to do, too, is if you look in the bottom right hand of the screen, you'll see there is a little gray box and there's an orange oval in that box. Oh, they can't see that. Hold on. Let me. Oh, because we're me, in the way. Yeah, yeah we're Slide in the us way. to the other side if you could. Oh, there okay. we go. Okay, cool. So in the bottom right hand corner, you should see that box. And it says like ECMWF, HRRR, GFS, NAM, ICON. Those are the different predictive models that are put out by the various weather agencies. Um, the ECMWF is the, the one that I usually stick with. Um, the, it, it tends to be the, the most precise for, for our location. Uh, the different ones are, you can look at those too, like if you want to click on one. Click on the uh, GFS, see what that's saying. Yeah, so they're pretty much in agreement. But sometimes you'll you'll put like the GFS model on, and it'll be like wildly different. So I usually stick with the ECMWF. I bet you some people kind of want to know what Saturday and Sunday look like. So yeah, let's, let's jump look at ahead. the window, uh, the weekend. So the weekend, uh, you know, you've got winds coming out of the south, southeast, um, but they're only about 12 knots. And again, you have that disorganized kind of low wind air mass thing hanging out over the, the peninsula so you know is it again is it going to be dead fly calm now but should be very doable okay and sunday sunday gets a little bit more sporty uh as we look at kind of the wind speeds have picked up uh again it depends on where that that lies and you'll get an idea on saturday because you can just you know go look and see You're like okay if it was rough on saturday it doesn't look like it's getting better on sunday but you know i would be I would be okay diving in this um, if it if it held to what was closer to the day before. If it got much worse, then you'd probably be in some pretty gnarly seas. And I think going into Tuesday, no, really, there we go. Tuesday actually looks pretty good, even though it's windy. It's mostly there we go. And it's like Tuesday night. That's Tuesday night. Here, hold on. There we go. There we go. Even though it's like you know you got a lot of yellow and orange and, and but that's green. offshore yeah yeah if you look at the winds are they're basically going across the peninsula so you know very doable <laughs> obviously wendy wants me to go premium oh i pay for it <laughs> and it's not it's not expensive yet I no. think it's like 12 bucks a year or something like that okay so let's go 
And what are some other ways to look at the marine weather? Well, we talked about using um, other resources like the NOAA report. Um, sometimes NOAA doesn't know a. Yeah, NOAA, <laughs> NOAA never knows a. Um, hold on, where am I? I think no is better for if you're going on. Like if I was planning a trip to the Bahamas, like I was going to run my boat to the Bahamas. Yeah, definitely check the NOAA forecast. But no is not so good at predicting inshore conditions. So this is the 4C website. And at the top here, we have a tab called Marine Forecasts. And that NOAA report, we have it plugged in right here. So if you want to take a look at the NOAA report, it's here. Um, but also every day, or at least I try every day, and of course this isn't refreshed. There we go. Um, every day I personally have to go in and update this. And um, this actually doesn't really tell you about the the winds or anything like that. that. That's over at Windy. But if you wanted to know just very basic, like the sea height, the visibility and water temperature, I'm actually putting these in daily. And I get these reports from either um, Facebook uh, or Instagram posts by the different dive boat charters that we operate with. Um, and also the Blue Heron Bridge, I get their um, reports from the Blue Heron Bridge Dive Club. So thank you, you guys, for always updating every day. Um, and so basically what I do is I plug these in and they're here as a resource that you can use these. Obviously today um, I didn't have reports for the Palm Beach and the Broward County area. Um, but the bridge, uh, it was open, it was doable. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's always hard too, because sometimes I don't get reports. So I'm sorry if it's not always accurate, um, as far as like the day that you're trying to look at, but, um, it's only because I really rely on not just me personally going out, but others going out and letting me know. So if you like to take photos or do videos, tag us 4C in either Instagram or Facebook uh, and give me the dive report and I'll put that up here. Okay. We love seeing others give us the dive report. Um, another thing uh, that we have on this website is underneath some of these things, I've got uh, links to beach cams and beach cams are amazing uses of uh, predicting the weather mm -hmm. because you can take a look at that and confirm with your apps what the ocean's doing. So let's go ahead and go to, um, this is the Deerfield Beach um, website and they have multiple cameras. So they do an underwater camera, they do a beach camera, they do a pier camera. So um, it might be hard because we're getting into the nighttime. So now everything's dark. So unfortunately, Yep, there it is. It's dark right now. But if I time. can, I can go back in oops and go back in time. So So this was like eight o'clock this morning and you can see like Definitely not the type of day that I'd want to be doing a beach dive. I also think it's hysterical that Deerfield puts a wave track over this. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no audio on the yeah. camera, but it's a nice <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, not a day that you'd want to be doing a beach dive. That is that is a dangerous entry for most of us. Oh boy, where did I just go? Oh boy. You can grab it from YouTube too. There we go. Okay, so their peer camera. Yeah, so the peer camera is great too because a lot of times um, I live in Deerfield and when I was much more intrepid, uh, when I was not diving as much, I used to get on my bike and ride uh, over to the beach. Oh, hold on. Somebody say that they're only seeing. Windy. What? Um, are you guys not seeing it? Oh, let's try it again. Hmm. Of course it wants to. <laughs> Let's see. What is it doing? I got to love technology. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't know why. Maybe because is it a new? Is it a new tab? No. I don't know. That's weird. Go to the windy uh, tab. Where's that? Hold on, let me try this. Oh, is that 
working? I don't know. Where is the the windy thing? Uh, where do we have windy open? Right yeah, here. Just go to uh, YouTube, and we should be able to grab the webcam. Okay. So go to YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Technical difficulties. Just bear with us. <laughs> okay. And then if you look at Deerfield Beach, he can get all their webcams. Okay. To this one. All right. Let's try this one. Rewind. Yeah. To. Too, so it's not so loud. Oh goodness, that's right. There we go. Any luck? All right, we're good, right? Everyone can see it. <laughs> or not? It's nope. We're still. What is going on? It's so random. So weird. Um, well, <laughs> try this one. Oh, here we go. Here we there go. we go. Woo! I think we're good. There we go. All right. Yeah, it's catching up. Okay. There we go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Just entertain All us right. with awesome. your beautiful well. voices. <laughs> So as you can see here, this was uh, this morning, 8.39 a.m. Uh, it is, uh, yeah, definitely three chili peppers. Uh, I was telling Nicole before, I I always use the uh, the van index. If you drive or, you know, if you go by the beach and you see a lot of surfer vans, you know it's probably not a good day for diving, but great day for surfing. So if you're into that, uh, you know, today was the day. But, uh, you know, if you look at these webcams, they can be an incredibly valuable tool for giving you another piece of information to, yeah, to uh, evaluate what it's going to be like to, to be on the water this day. With the Deerfield Beach cameras specifically, um, always check all of them. They have four cameras, I think now, one underwater, the sport camera, the surf camera, and then the peer camera. The peer camera is really useful because if you look at the pier camera, it faces the beach. So you can see what is happening out in the ocean as opposed to standing from the shore. And why it's useful is because a lot of times on days when you look at the other cameras and it looks pretty calm, you pop onto the pier camera and you can get the reflection of the sun off of the wave crests and you can get a better idea of, of what the conditions are gonna be like. So you know, on a day like today, you could see those waves coming through. If you look at like that cylindrical swim buoy, it is bouncing all over the place. Uh, those buoys tend to have like, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 feet of extra chain lying on the bottom that keeps them in place. And that thing is just getting tossed around and it's fully taut. So not a good day. Yeah. Um, also, when you're talking about looking at all the cameras, mm -hmm. You can also do the underwater camera. And this is a great source of figuring out what potentially the water visibility is going to be. Looks like it needs to get scrubbed. <laughs> it does need to get scrubbed. They're usually pretty good about it, though. Um, Deerfield uh, does a great job with their uh, supporting these various live streams. Um, and they're, they're invaluable tools for divers. You know, you could see today the visibility is, is very poor, but what's, what always amazes me about Florida, um, like I said earlier, I'm from New Jersey and like in New Jersey, the only time we get decent visibility is if it like doesn't rain for four or five weeks and the ocean is dead flat calm. Once it rains once, that's it, we're done. What never ceases to amaze me here in Florida is like, it could be like this today and tomorrow it could be a hundred feet of is. Absolutely. The conditions down here are so dynamic and they change so frequently that you just never know what you're going to get. It's like the box of chocolate dive. Yeah. Another thing, I mean, you're seeing the pier a little bit on the side of the camera and you can see those hydroids. They're just flopping in the wind there. That's how you know that there's a lot of current and there's a lot of w uh, waves going by. Um, but it's really cool. If you have um, 
a TV at home or if you have uh, a second screen when you're at work, you can literally pop this up and you can enjoy the underwater world. I've seen many a times little critters swimming up to this uh, camera, checking it out. Um, a lot of times it's fish. Um, I've seen a sea turtle before and uh, they actually caught a hammerhead shark uh, mm -hmm. on camera here once. So lots to see underwater. Um, it's a great resource. Uh, another camera that you can use is if you're looking for the Blue Heron Bridge and wanting to know the visibility there, uh, Manatee Lagoon has a live camera. They have both a topside and underwater um, camera. Um, unfortunately, this is live and it doesn't have a rewind button that I'm aware of because it's, it's gray, but it's not letting me click it. Yeah. So obviously right now it's too dark, but if you guys are looking to see what potentially is the visibility at the bridge, you can take a look at this Manatee Lagoon camera to uh, kind of gauge if it's worth getting geared up to go diving down there. Um, so those are uh, some ways to check visibility. Um, there's also cameras in uh, Lauderdale by the sea. There are there's a camera on the Dania Beach Pier Cam as well. So uh, you've got multiple resources to check for for pier and beach cameras in this part of Florida. Okay, so I we already talked about this. I just didn't want to jump off because we were having technical difficulties. <laughs> but questions. Um, I have a question. If anybody has a question, go ahead and type in the comments. But um, I get this a lot, Greg. I get people who aren't from the area and they go, oh my gosh, thunderstorms, mm -hmm. rain. You can't dive in rain. <laughs> okay, first of all, guys, you're going diving. You're going to be wet anyways. Right. So rain is fine. You can dive in rain. Actually, I'm from California. You said from Jersey. I'm from California and out there because of the runoff uh, in the California waters that happens when it rains, they actually advise people to not get in the water 72 hours after it rained. They, sh mm. they shouldn't return. So yeah, don't have that problem here. Mm -mm. Um, but thunderstorms and lightning. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, the rain really screws things up in other parts of the country, but not so much here in Florida. Um, I think a big part of that is is the fact that the ground here is basically sand, so we don't get nearly as much runoff. You will get some that come out of the canals and things like that at low tide on you know some of the dive sites that are closer to the inlets and things like that. But generally speaking, rain doesn't doesn't make a huge difference. And especially on like if you're going down into like Pompano or Lauderdale by the sea, a lot of times what'll happen is like the first five feet may be green and gross, but once you get underneath that five foot layer, it's crystal clear blue water, so you don't really have to worry about it. Now, when it comes to things like thunderstorms, um, I always err on the side of caution when it comes to lightning. Nicole and I were talking about this before the live stream, and you know, if there ever was a documented case of a diver being struck by lightning, we actually found one. Mm -hmm. In 2007, a diver off Deerfield was struck by lightning. Uh, is it likely? No. Uh, what is more likely, though, is a, is a lightning strike on a beach or in an open field. Um, I looked up the stats and roughly seven people uh, are the victim or fatalities per year because of lightning in the state of Florida. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I'm not laughing. Yeah, just, yeah, it's, it's just, just crazy. The, the chance of you getting hit. Exactly. Uh, so much so that if you've ever been to, you know, Tiger Tail Lake or if you've ever been to a park or anything like that, they have the Thor systems installed so that you get some type of early warning about uh, potential conditions that can lead to lightning strikes. Just because there's not a thunderstorm overhead does not mean that lightning isn't dangerous. So in the summertime, a lot of times I always tell people don't plan anything for after like three o'clock because you can set your watch and it's going to rain. So mornings are always best. This time of year, we don't get too many thunderstorms. So you're pretty much, if, if it looks nice out, you know, grab your gear and go diving. Mm -hmm. um, you know, always have a plan in place. Uh, I've definitely been in situations, especially in the summertime, diving my little reef there in Boca and I poke my head up and I'm like, oh, those clouds are kind of dark. And then 30 seconds later, I'm like, oh, those clouds are kind of dark. And they're like really fastly moving towards me. I should probably go now. And then I kick my little uh, feet and uh, get out of the water as quickly as possible uh, and find shelter because obviously we don't want any, uh, any accidents in the last... I, I don't know if, in fact, if you get struck by lightning, you get superpowers, but let's not test that idea. Let's not test it. <laughs> um, but it does make sense to, if you are going to get out and there is like 
a rain and a thunderstorm or, you know, storm that rolls through while you're diving, um, you want to have the right gear to help you, uh, you know, in an emergency. Mm -hmm. So um, we call these things whiteouts uh, when we're on the boat. And so when you surface, you can't see the boat, they can't see you. So you want to make yourself very visible. So a couple of items that you can get is a signaling tube. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to like the pink ones. I think they're the most visible, but not everyone's a pink girl. Or pink guy. and orange. <laughs> Yellow, not so much, but yeah. pink and orange. Are pink good. and orange are the, probably the best. Um, having a whistle. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and then also having a flashlight because you can turn it on and you can flash it like this and the people can see you in a distance. Absolutely. Uh, about two years ago, I think it was. Yeah, maybe two years ago, I was in the shop and I had a... Uh, some people came in, it was a husband and wife, and they were asking me if we sold uh, like portable GPS transponders. And I said, yeah, we do. Um, but, you know, it's kind of a, usually the the t people who buy those are doing like expedition type diving. Like I'm going to Cocos Island and I want one, that kind of stuff. It's, it's kind of rare that we sell them for locals. And I said, well, what, what happened? And they told me a story about how their son and their son's friend were out uh, with their boat and they were diving. Uh, the diver had no flag and all his buddy was doing was following the bubbles and they were out spear fishing or something like that. Well, a thunderstorm rolled through, whiteout conditions and his buddy lost him. They ended up pulling the kid out of the ocean in front of the Boca Inlet at like 1030 that night after he'd been missing for many, many hours. And obviously the parents were completely terrified and spooked and yeah. they were asking me, you know, how do I solve this? Uh, the easiest thing would be if, you know, they didn't deviate from what they learned in open water. How many things went wrong in that situation? Number one, he was diving alone, right? right? Unless you're solo certified, which is a course we do offer here at 4C. Unless you're solo certified, you should always have a buddy. You should always have a flag or some kind of surface marker buoy so that your boat operator can know where you are. On top of that, like Nicole said, you should have some type of signaling tube, some kind of SMB, the bigger, the better, so that the boat can find you. And if in the worst case scenario, the Coast Guard helicopter or airplane can find you as well. Uh, you know, those are really easy things to have that aren't that technologically advanced. They ended up finding him because he at least had the wherewithal to dive down to the reef and he speared one of the big barrel sponges and would, was using that as a signaling device. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so, crazy. Yeah. Could have easily been avoided with like a, you know, $50 SMB that'll last you 20 years. Um, and like you were saying, we do carry uh, those GPS mm -hmm. and marine radio devices. Um, if you're interested, you can come in and we can give you kind of a tutorial about those. Um, but again, you have to make sure that they are charged and that they're hooked up and you uh, make sure the boat radio is synced with yours, right? Because yeah. they're not going to do anything good. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was a great uh, question. But um this is an even better question, Greg, is they want to know what's your uh, graph chart with the various chili pepper levels and rotten to Wagyu conditions? <laughs> so it's a, it's a, uh, a very uh, unique rating system that has been evaluated by multiple peer reviewed scientific uh, literary sources. <laughs> um, it's with with conditions wise when things when we go from uh, bad to worse, there's three chili peppers, one chili pepper. Now you don't want to dive when there's any chili peppers, but one chili pepper is like maybe like four to five foot disorganized chop, really not a good day. Two chili peppers. Now you're pushing like six footers. Um, mm -hmm. and six footers down here are like really un unenjoyable. Once you get to three chili peppers, then you're like, six foot plus, you know, and then you start getting into those waves where it's like they're crashing over the Deerfield Pier and like you don't want to be out in the ocean at all. Fortunately for us, we don't get very many of those days. Um, on the other side, when we have positive dive conditions, we have the uh, the patented uh, Wagyu scale. And that starts off with... Patented in by you? Yes. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, it starts off with ragu conditions, like the sauce, right? You can, if you were to go scuba diving in a giant vat of tomato sauce, you wouldn't see very much. So ragu <laughs> conditions aren't going to provide good visibility. Uh, you can think of ragu conditions... Um, 
the best way to describe it is either Tiger Tail Lake on any given day. Although, <laughs> interestingly enough, the last time I was at Tiger Tail, the best visibility we've ever had. It was like a solid 10 feet. It was actually really cool. But uh, like when they, uh, they drain Okeechobee at the bridge, mm. right? And it's like there's no such thing as high tide when they do that because there's all this runoff and you can't see anything. That's Ragu. Completely terrible conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, once we get into diveable conditions, uh, you start off with uh, choice, right? Choice conditions. Okay. Then as you move up, then you get to select. Ooh. And then once you get beyond that, then you get to prime conditions. On any given day in Florida, I would say we're probably at prime conditions. That's kind of like our baseline. You're looking at somewhere in the ballpark of like, you know, 30 to 50 feet of visibility um with relatively calm surface conditions i will point out that is horizontal ver uh, visibility i always laugh when the term top to bottom gets tossed around well yes it is very pretty to look up and see the boat generally speaking we don't dive that way so vertical visibility is not that important to divers um more so horizontal visibility uh, i've measured it before you can measure visibility with uh like a rec reel and some knots in your line and, and just having predetermined knots, have your buddies swim away and see when you can see them. Or if you really want to get nerdy about it, you can use a secchi disc. Uh, that's how we used to do it in, <laughs> in uh, aquatic biology class. But uh, you're in basically that 30 foot, 30 to 40 foot range for, for your baseline. Now, as we start to get better than that, then we start to go, the, the cycle repeats, but we add a modifier. So now it becomes prime choice, prime select and then we get up into wagyu when it's wagyu conditions that's like the perfect dive day dead flat calm at the surface blue water so you get your top to bottom but you also have at least 80 plus foot of visibility pushing on 100 um you know 100 foot of visibility what realistically is that like if you're gonna say that there's 100 feet of vis there needs to be some quantifiable measure for that. So you better be able to be at the bow of the Lady Luck mm -hmm. and see the wheelhouse clearly. Yeah. You better be able to be at the stern of the Ancient Mariner and see the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, there was a couple days uh, two years ago where I was on the Ancient Mariner and uh, I was at the stern and I could see the whole thing. And I was like, how far is that? And I looked it up in my handy dandy little rec guide, which we have available here at 4C. And it's like 130 some odd feet long. I was like, damn, it really was 150 foot of this. Hmm. So that's how you measure them. Um, you know, it's, if you're into steaks at all, or if you've ever been to the supermarket, it is loosely based on that. Uh, although I <laughs> claim to make no royalties to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, what he's referring to is... Uh, You'll either see myself, Greg, and some other 4C divers that we uh, <laughs> love to do the dive conditions for you. And he always gives you those uh, those conditions with the peppers and the steaks. And I, you know, listen, <laughs> I just scream at you, hey, 4C divers. <laughs> so <laughs> Rachel wants to know if there's a vegan version. Oh. Um, yeah, you can have vegan versions of all of that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, guys, uh, a couple of you are asking um, if we can go over that Windy app again. Listen, we went in, we're almost done here, and you can rewind once this uh, lives on the timeline. You can rewind back to that and rewatch all the examples that we gave because um, they were really, really uh detailed. Mm -hmm. So um, we're sorry, we're not going to go back and review. Um, and then also we saw on here that uh, you miss what uh, preferred source of the local boat captains is. Um, well, it's it's exactly the ones that we're using. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have any secret ones unless we, we're not really sure. I mean, maybe they do have some secret ones. They do have, you know, the boat captains, especially the commercial boat captains, like not the charter boat operators, but like the commercial guys. They have, and I've learned more, pretty much all the little tips and secrets I've learned are from the, the charter boat cat or the commercial like fishing guys. Uh, and they, they, they know the ocean cause they're on it every day. Uh, and they'll know the little quirks and where to go. Like one of the things I learned recently is like, you know, some days you'll hear like, there's no visibility in Palm beach County or there's no visibility in Jupiter, but we've got plenty of viz down here. And what I learned is that the Bahamas can actually block some of that offshore swell that otherwise takes the bottom and rocks it around and brings all that particulate matter up into the um, 
into the water column and then you lose the visibility. So I learned that and, uh, you know, they just, it's just from being old salts, old, wise, salty divers. Absolutely. Um, I also just remembered sometimes I go to the CETO um, Facebook page and they will post the conditions from their CETO vessels. So um, they're not the best at like knowing what we need for diving, but at least they're telling you, yeah, guys, don't go out. <laughs> right. Like general boating conditions. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, that is all we have for tonight. We thank you all for tuning in and we hope this was educational. We hope this is going to be helpful and we hope that it saved your next dive. All right, guys. See you later.